Are you looking to buy a new TV? In this video, everything you need to know before buying a new television. Nowadays the amount of screen sizes available is outstanding, from 14 inches to over 100 inches, so how do you figure out the right size for you? According to THX, you should divide the diagonal width by 0.84 inches, this will give the result of the ideal distance between you and the screen. Using this method, if you get a 65 inch TV, you should sit around 6.5 feet from it. Another calculation you could try is a seating position, between one and a half or two times the diagonal width of your screen. Using this approach, a 65 inch screen would work for a viewing distance between 8.1 and 10.8 feet. But if you want, you can try the viewing distance calculator, you find the links in this video description below. If you're one of those who think this will work for you, there are a few things to consider. First. Remember that the TV will be right up flat to the wall, so you might want to go up a screen size or two. Second, many TVs don't ship with wall mounts included, so look for a TV with wall mount screw positions compatible with the Vaser industry standard. And another thing to keep in mind is the viewing angles, especially vertical viewing angles. If you are planning to mount your TV near ceiling or above a fireplace, something typically not recommended. There are two types of TV technology, LCD and OLED, and both are important variations on the LCD industry. LCD LED TVs, used panels of liquid crystal pixels illuminated by external light sources. The advantage of LCD TVs are the brightness, the affordability and durability. Their main disadvantages are limited viewing angles, and difficulties controlling light in the picture. There are two types of LCD panel, IPS and VA. IPS are predominantly made by LG displays, feature in LG LCD TVs, and also in some usually affordable models from other brands. VA panels are more widely used, and are made by a variety of manufacturers. IPS panels offer slightly wider viewing angles than VA panels, but struggle with contrast. On the other hand VA panels feature narrower viewing angles but generally produce much better contrast. OLED TVs use a system of organic phosphors that enable each pixel to generate its own light. This allows a superior contrast and light precision than you can get with even the most advanced LCD TV. OLED TVs can be watched from much wider viewing angles than LCD TVs, without color or contrast reducing. However, there are also issues with an OLED TVs. They're still substantially more expensive, and OLED TVs currently can't get nearly bright like a LCD TV. Something that could become an issue with HDR content. If you want to buy an LCD TV, the key point to consider is how the panel is lit, because this has a great impact on the screen contrast. Some panels use lights mounted on the edge of the screen, edge lit panels, while others use lights mounted directly behind the screen. Generally speaking, TVs with lights behind the screen deliver better contrast than edge lit models, but these models don't generally feature such slim designs, tend to cost more, and often consumes more power. Other option to consider with LCD TVs is local dimming. This can dramatically improve contrast. These days main connections are, HDMI, USB ports and multimedia support. With HDMI try to get at least 3, and with 4K TVs, try to get a TV with a 2.0 rather than 1.4 HDMI version. USB ports are useful for both playing back multimedia, look for at least 2, ideally 3, but keep an eye on the USB-C type, it will be a stander soon. Most TVs have built-in Wi-Fi and Ethernet ports, so that you can connect them to the internet. Curved TVs are much less common in 2017. If you are looking to buy a very large TV, or you're going to be sitting pretty close to your screen, a curved screen can make a slightly more immersive experience. 
Curved screens follow the shape of your eye making the corners of the picture look sharper than they do on a flat TV. And also curved screens lose less color and contrast when viewed from an angle. However, there are issues. First, they tend to distort any on-screen reflections. Second, if you watch from an angle of really much more than 20 to 25 degrees, the picture can start to look shortened. And finally, if you're not seated in the optimal position, if you're either too far back or off to the side, curved TVs can distort the picture's geometry. High Dynamic Range HDR TVs are able to produce pictures that contain much more brightness and contrast than normal TVs, as long what you're watching contains HDR luminance data. All current HDR TVs also support wider color spectrums, often described as wide color gamut, or WCG. Currently there are three types of HDR. HDR10 is the industry standard, and all TVs support it. Dolby Vision adds an extra layer of information that tells a TV how to render pictures on a scene. Only some brands like LG, Vizio, TCL and Sony support this. And there is also Hybrid Log Gamma that was designed for HDR broadcasts. Some LCD TVs, usually high-end TVs, have started to use this technology. Quantum Dot technology delivers wider color ranges than you can get with normal LCD panels. Quantum dots are tiny particles, from 2 to 10 nanometers in size, with each size capable of emitting a different color, avoiding color filters and white LED backlights, two things that typically limit an LCD TV color performance. Quantum dot TVs are generally markedly more expensive than normal LCD TVs. And Samsung is still a biggest reliable manufacturer in this quantum dot technology, with its 2017 models. But there are alternatives to quantum dots when comes to expanding color range. Triluminous models from Sony use wide range phosphors. And LG with nanocells in its high end TVs. Screen brightness, as measured in nits, and with many HDR proponents including Dolby Vision, we are enter on a nit race where TVs all push to get brighter and brighter. The brightest LCD TVs, Samsung's upcoming QLED models can get as bright as 2000 nits. The 2017 generation of OLED TVs are recognized to get to between 800 and 1000 nits. Contrast ratio is basically a calculation of the difference between a screen deepest black and brightest whites, written for instance as 10,000 to 1. But now few TV brands are quoting contrast ratios. The sound quality of a flat TV can vary greatly. This is something that you should pay attention if you do not intend to use an external sound system. Look how many speakers a TV has, and its configuration. For instance, a 2 to 1 configuration would indicate two stereo main speakers with one dedicated bass speaker or a 3 to 1 configuration, that would point to a dedicated center or dialogue channel, alongside stereo and bass speakers. Subwoofer speakers for bass are always welcome, because it's known how much TV speakers suffers from lack of lower end sounds. Another audio issue is lack of space available to speakers in thin TVs, meaning, they usually have to expel their sound downwards. TVs that manage to provide forward sound results in a much cleaner and more powerful sound. Another warning is TVs that offers DTS, or Dolby Digital Surround Decoding. No TV can deliver anything close to a proper surround sound from its own speakers. The best solution here is to use actual rear speakers, especially with a subwoofer to add bass. Today almost every TV can connect to a network, enabling the use of online features, or to access media files stored on other devices such as cell phones, tablets, network attached storage etc. But in reality, the quality of such smart features can vary greatly, don't be seduced by app quantity, the vast majority of TV apps are pointless, app quality is much more important. In fact, for many the only online feature that really matter, are the online streaming services, especially Amazon Prime, Netflix, and catch-up services for your region's broadcasters. Finally, the simplicity of a smart TV interface will rule in how much you might use it.
Currently, LG's WebOS and Panasonic's home screen systems handle their content most effectively. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if this video was useful to you, subscribe to this channel, that I'm sure you already did, and I'll see you in the next videos. Cheers.